Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience, from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you lead a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey, hey, leader. Happy, happy Thursday. Welcome back to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast. Today, well, today actually as we're recording, you're actually going to be listening next week. Um, today is World Mental Health Day. Yeah. And this is something that Carol and I really hold very dear to our hearts. Yeah. And when we think about the podcast and the mission, the vision behind this podcast, a lot of it stems for stems from us being and taking a stand for you, for you listener in your health, whether it be mental, physical health, to be able to support you in being the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast, sorry, not podcast, but leader <laughs> and really showing up as the, the true best version of yourself. And so when we talk a lot about the neural science behind the English Unstoppable leader, we often will speak into that. And which is, this is why we are so honored and excited to have with us today, Bethan, Mary <clears throat> Thompson, who is here to speak to us about mental health. And I just love that the timing of this happened to be, you know, today as we're recording World Mental Health Day and really taking a stand for you and how you can show up as the healthiest Yes. most vitalized leader yes. while also being mindful of your mental health and how you really can take time for yourself to just flourish in all areas while taking time for you to ensure that that is that you're you're healthy in that area so welcome Bethan. we'd love for you to take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience yeah uh, good evening good day wherever you are I my name is Bethan mary thompson i'm known as the warrior um Mental health and wellness has been with me, I think, for a very long time. I was started as a leader um, when I was seven in Brownies. Then I went to guides, young leaders, and I was a ranger. So for me, being on a stage and leading from the front has also been important. Mm -hmm. um, for self-care has been important because I've been a former caregiver. My late mum had cancer. And then, sadly, she had cancer and dementia. So mental wellness was really important for her on one side, but also for me. And finding that self-care wasn't easy because, obviously, you are travelling through that maze. You cannot go out. People didn't go out in COVID and thought the world had gone nuts. Yeah. But actually, that was my life and is for many. But I found way, unique tools and strategies and ways that you can do the things when you want to turn that chaos off, like silly little things. Like I would go outside and I would sweep the garden path for half an hour and I would take my coffee when we first had COVID and there was so much chaos going on. People were like, moaning about how what they can do and they wanted to go for meals and they're getting stressed because they can't afford food. So I, I went to the city and I bought all the local coffee bar and I bought this plastic cup of Starbucks. And then I went to the supermarket and I bought the packets of coffee and I would take it outside because that's what I used to do when my mum was here, when she was like, stressed we'd sit outside and we could have that half an hour away from all the chaos so there is unique tools that you can do everyone is feeling stress you know i'm seeing people coming back from cardiff today on the bus youngsters on the phone yeah you can be on the phone but sooner or later as leaders if that mindset is so jumbled and I understand that because I have a hidden disability. 
I lost my speech just before my mum died wow. because I had bruising on the brain. Wow. And when you have a mental health condition like me, you need to put in your schedules. I know a lot of students are finding that it's very difficult to study because they're not used to putting that routine yeah. into their study guides. Okay. So number one, they need to put that time in their schedules to turn the phone off, to actually turn the TV off, to actually step away. And maybe they just need to just ha go outside and sit quietly. Make their mum, dad, cup of tea. Maybe they need to play with their brother or sister. Yeah. You know, like, I know it sounds old-fashioned, but sometimes just even if you've got little ones and that, tell them a story because they're distracting it. But also, if their mindset is more clear, then as they become leaders, they will show good leadership because they'll show they've got good decisions in what they're going to do because that's important if you're working in a team because as they go out into the workforce and they are actually working with people who may have um you know the world is like in a really bad way at the moment as we know there's people suffering from bereavement there is people suffering from traumas and there is also people out there youngsters that are thinking of the pressure of studying mm. at all levels and that, and some are not coping. And many suicides are out there, which is huge, absolutely huge. On World Mental Health Wellness Day, I do know that even though I'm in UK, it is high in America and here, and it's getting higher and higher. And if they don't do something, and they don't talk to people when they're in that situation, when they're getting that emotions, it's not going to help later on when they're going to be leaders because they need to have that clear mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is so important. As, as you're speaking, there's a few things that are coming to mind for me. Like when it goes back to when I had my burnout was like the power of that white space, right? The power of the white space being disconnected and mindfully integrating that, as you said, like in the schedule, like creating that. The other thing that was coming up for me as I was hearing you speak, I got to witness, or not witness, I got to partake in a parent workshop earlier this week where I was introduced to the eight different styles of play. And as you were speaking, like talking about, you know, reading a story or playing with your siblings or even making mom and dad a cup of tea, right? Yeah. It's there's the play piece and then there's the connection piece that I'm hearing you kind of drive home. And as Carol, and I know with the neuroscience piece, right? When we play and we have fun, we release, you know, the neurochemicals, oxytocin, serotonin, the dopamine, those feel good chemicals, which are going to support us with our mental health to feel more fulfilled and happier, right? And it's going to help with that stress. It's going to help when we're not feeling good. But one question that I, was, that I was thinking that came up as you were saying in terms of, yes, there's that piece, right? The white space piece and, and the, the play piece and the connection piece. You also said about um, receiving support or, or like having that connection with people. So what's coming to me is what are some questions either if you have some, maybe someone in your life that you are concerned about, you know, what are some questions that you could ask? And then if you are somebody who is I don't like to say the word struggling, but the reality is you're struggling. You're not doing so great. How do you invite the person to approach or reach somebody else? Because it, it, it is really easy to go about by ourselves and not admit what we're up to and or not what we're up to. Sorry. <laughs> admit, so like, how isolated. We're feeling. To see yeah. the signs. Yeah, there is yeah. signs in that to see the yeah. stress and that. And yeah. that's one of the things that I suppose that we all learn. But I think that it was more prevalent that I had to learn that in a different way when I was caring for my mum who had dementia mm, yeah. you know because that's his memory loss that is real cognitive paper going up and down but also like children can get distracted if they've got ADHD autism and that so it's actually journaling and that thinking mm -hmm. about your emotions yeah. so actually if 
you were aware of your friend is going up and down and is the I mean initially is to ask them are they okay is there something bothering them I mean we all go through that yeah and um you know I have about one of my best friends um we both support each other but we know if one is not having a good day or a good hour and then it's about building that no like and trust with your friendships, whether it's with your work colleagues, whether it's with your family members and that. So the and parents, you know, sitting down and actually talking to them and asking them, you know, what's going on in school today? What's happened? You know, when I used to come home from school, and I know it doesn't happen with everyone, but my mum would sit us down and ask us how our school day had been. And Like, you know, if there was something wrong, she wanted to hear about it more than anyone else. Mm. And that because you do. And I think that when I was caring, I didn't have that because there was no one to actually, because I'm in that bubble. And there is many people that were in that bubble now who are feeling overwhelmed, like men. Men is a big thing at the moment because they don't want to talk about their emotions. They don't want to tell their wives, their partners, yeah. and that, that they're struggling with mental health. But they are. Yeah. They are struggling, you know, and it might be, for example, that they're struggling because they've got to pay a mortgage. You know, mortgages are high and they don't want to feel that they've let their down. So it's about, you know, sitting down as a team and talking about those things, whether you have a fam- weekly family meeting and sit down and talk to, you know, your little ones and that, or explain. Um, I was talking to somebody on the bus stop today, perfect example, and she was saying about the shootings in America and everything because of bullying. And she said that her one little girl didn't want flashing trainers and the mother didn't want to buy them. And the girl was like, mentally going crazy but the mother was trying to explain that if she bought those and she they were shooting in there she wouldn't be able to run away because they would see her so it's sitting down and explaining we're coming towards christmas you know people may be feeling that energy level that they want to buy their children stuff they want to buy their family stuff Adults understand, but some people don't understand that why you can't buy the things and then that sets off things. So you need to sit down. But if you see them struggling, the main thing is, is to initially ask the questions. Hmm. Show them the support. Yeah. Give them the organisation. You know, I tell people. But I also, if they don't take it up, there's only so much you can do. You can t- advise people to go places. You can advise them to do certain things. Um, like if they're, you know, work if they're working too much on Zoom, they're getting burnt out on Zoom. That's mental stress because of all the chaos. And they have, if they don't take that time out, like I have, and think. Are they using their energies in the wrong way, like too many networks or, you know, are they going to the schools and that, you know, friends taking the football, um, cricket, she's running around everywhere and then she's saying, I'm burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, but you're burnt out because you're trying to do everything. We're not super women. None of us are. And if you don't slow down, because the reality is, here's one, I didn't slow down for a bit and I fell four times. So I'm now on crutches. Mm -hmm. So now I'm struggling to actually get on the bus, do my shopping and that. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine if your child's in a wheelchair suddenly and you've got to think your whole world has got to change. And mentally, that can be very, very difficult. If your grandmother ends up in hospital... There's so many examples and that. And as the workshops are coming for a mental health and wellness for adults and one for teenagers, we will address some of those issues. I have a checklist 
which I did some work with Mind here, which is a chat non-profit, and that, and it's, it's a scale from one to five. And it's quite good, actually, to do it every now and again, to see your own, to see the triggers, to journal, and see where our figures are, and that, and to understand. So, because if, if we can cope with our mental health, then we can cope with our leaders, our children and parents can deal with this because you can have a husband or a wife, whichever, they're stressed and you've got to figure out because if your stress will go on to that child, that goes into school, then they come home, then no one is able to sleep properly. Sleeping is important, as we all know, and then you're all like crazy and that doesn't want to happen. You want to be having your Saturday nights watching movies, cozy up, or, you know, a barbecue outside for where you are, I'm sure, or whatever, you know, if the weather's right. But here it's about popcorn and movie nights and that. And maybe make that as one of your, like, things and say, let's sit down. What's going on? You know, is there somebody that's not talking to them in school? Is there somebody that... that the wife is not happy, you know, or, or the bills. You know, those are the things that you have to address before it starts building up bereavement. Yeah, there's, also... there's, a, there's a few things as you're speaking, Bethan, that you're speaking into. Like one, you know, Carol and I often talk about vision, right? So the importance of vision and like what you're creating. And sometimes to create that vision, you might experience some things that are uncomfortable, right? Uncomfortable conversations, being honest sometimes is not always comfortable having those discussions with your, your partners, even with your team, your children, like, your, like with people in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. However, on the other side of that, there is the vision, you know, when you're talking about whatever you want to create, whether it be Saturday movie night as a family, right. Being able to create that connection, taking down the walls, right. When our brain feels safe, then we're able to open up and really share and connect. And it, and it really is about creating that space as well. You know, you mentioned it before, like the no, like and trust factor. So yeah. just some things that are coming to me as you're speaking is really looking at, you know, those around you, like, do you have that safe space to open up and have that conversation? Mm -hmm. If you don't feel you have that right now, it's about creating that space. And again, looking at ways as a family to create connection and create those moments of the joy of the fun of the play so that you can sort of counter counterbalance the, the stress and to not also let the stress go unmanaged. And it's okay that if that it, maybe you do get to get some outside help. I know that was a big thing for me because as you're talking about, then something that was coming up for me was what about if you are embarrassed? that you need help? What if you think, cause this is my story that I'm, I'm strong enough to go through this. Like, these are just some things that are coming, we're coming to me and, and we're, you know, we're, we're saying to the listener, like, if this is you or, you know, some around you, like it's okay. It doesn't make you look weak. It actually makes you look stronger okay. because you're not. It is important because I, support, you know, right? I've been through yeah. domestic violence and I've got counseling. I went to bereavement counseling mm -hmm. and two friends did not and went through a different bereavement to me mm. and they're still going through a different bereavement to me yeah. because we all have to go through it at some point whether it's your grandmother your mother your father and that is even more so now when we see people and also if they're family members you know youngsters are very um when a, when a grandmother is not well and that my niece took it really well but like my brother didn't take it very well when his mum was ill. Yeah. And and then you have to deal with that dynamic. And then dementia, you know, when your grandmother or grandfather gets it, you know, they're starting to understand more about how the mindset works and that. But if they don't educate them, so that by the time they get through to that, they're more aware of it and that because they started to create those memories and that because they're losing their grandmother, they're losing their, their grandfather, they could be losing their mother. You know, there's women that have lost their mums even now, like myself, six years on, 
that it still feels like yesterday because no one can replace your mum. No one. Yeah. No one can replace your father. But um, and because of my spirituality, and I'm 60 this year, proud of that. That's I awesome. actually you and I are the same. My, yeah, that's apart awesome. of my spirituality. Yeah. My mum and dad were married in a local church to me. And as a Catholic, I celebrated the way that I wanted to do by having a message in a special mass a week ago. Wow. So that I could remember then. Mm. Because yeah. for me, now my mindset is a lot clearer because I've gone through the grief. I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm not going to say it's not done. Yeah, and it will keep coming because I've just lost the best friend. Excuse but it me, Beth. Having support. Um, excuse me. I just want to interject something. I think I want to reiterate what you've been sharing with us because it's incredibly powerful. You've listed several things that can, several tools that can be so impactful. You mentioned the mindset right? You mentioned creating space. And as you're well aware, it can be very difficult to make good decisions when your brain is has experienced trauma or grief, because yeah. it's in survival brain. You mentioned journaling, you mentioned reaching out to people. Now, these days, we can reach out virtually on zoom. So we we may not be able to go out of the house, but it's really important that we have those connections. And so I just Absolutely. want to reiterate the power of these tools that you're sharing with us on our mental health journeys. I lost my husband. It was just 10 years ago, just had my anniversary and um, he passed very soon. Yeah. So you know, being able to, like you said, have a mentor, a counselor that you can go through grief and experience it in a different way than those around you. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that for each of us listening, because what you're sharing is incredibly important and powerful, and there are tools available. So thank you very much. I think um, music is always great and putting in certain things for, for, for you that you can actually connect that mindset with the person that you've lost or the person you're going through that, whether you're caring for them. Like I know it's, things were coming up to Christmas and that. I buy three presents for myself every year. Yeah. I bought one today. <laughs> But I buy things that I know that my mum would like. Yeah. Like, I know that she's, like, watching me today and thinking, this is what you need to do today. Like, and that I did, and I still do. I write to my mum very regularly. She might not be here physically, but you can still write as if they're here yeah. in a physical presence yeah. so that you can get that mindset because... When you're not sleeping, here's the thing. When I was a baby, and this is what people forget, they don't ask their parents what they were like when they were little, how they slept. Now, I always listen to music. So when I was going through this mental trauma and sleeping, I actually put music on and then I journaled, which I'd done for a long time. So when mum died, I went to the cruise here which is a charity for bereavement and I wrote to my mum and I wrote seven I've written 82 books wow 82 books wow. that I've written stuff that I can put into books eventually and put all this, the learning tools that the strategies and the leadership things that you know that I have done because obviously I did a leadership program after COVID and I put all the things and use my lived experience and that into things and that, and which I do, but I wrote. And when I'm in, when you're in that chaos, if you take that 10 minutes a day, it can be in the middle of the night. You know, if some people write in the night, like me, some people write in the morning, some people write in the night, 
it doesn't matter but if you encourage your children to do it as well because then as they go through the leadership when they look back they'll think when they're applying for college schools or something they'll think whether they might do volunteering and that all that helps with the leadership as well because that can get them in the room before someone else if they've done it and that's another thing that I did I did volunteering so that I could get ahead of the game so that I was going to get in in the front of things I didn't think of it at that time but really when I was doing my teaching when my mum had cancer the first time I went in a room and my mum said tell them all the voluntary stuff you did so I did yeah. so that I could get in the room but mm. then I had to give up because my mum became more ill wow wow you've mentioned so many tools like and you know you leaned into vision Alex Leanne you highlighted that you lean into the journaling that you can write to the person that you've lost you know and I do I highly re recommend that for yeah for anyone and um I know it's not for everyone but then okay if you don't you can make videos every yeah. mm, anniversary yeah. I have um I have actually dried flowers or taken flowers from my garden mm. and when it's like coming Christmas it might be anniversaries I will go and stand in my garden which I did in Covid I had a cup of coffee and chocolate eclairs which we left <laughs> said prayers and I actually threw these flowers and made videos no. to my mum and you could do those things because yeah. that will help your mindset yeah to be honest and you mentioned buying gifts as well um yeah that, you know were things for you now but that were something you felt like she would like and enjoy and that you can create a memory there even yeah. in this present time I think that people tend as well, they tend to rush to get rid of stuff as well. Yeah. And that I don't suggest is a very good thing because I do know that people have done that. Friends lost their mums before mine and then turned around and two years later said, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Someone yeah. else lost videos and someone else lost emails and that. All those things are important to us. We've got, you know, we're on Zoom now. Right. But things break, things may not last, but we can take, when you're in that chaos, if you take a picture of something that can mean a lot and you are actually in meltdown, which I've been, I've yeah. been there, guys. I've been there when it's so, like from darkness and I've written about it. Yeah. But you can bring yourself back to reality by looking at a picture and thinking wow. that was something special, whether it's walking your dog, you know, a picture of your dog or your niece or going to somewhere. All those things you can do, you know, you can do mm -hmm. as a family, you can do on your own. Bethan, will you share with us now as we're wrapping up and, and thank you for talking about things from a visual perspective, from a movement perspective, from the musical listening perspective, you know, a lot of ways that tools and gifts that you help people make this work for them. Um, what do you have coming up as we wrap this up here that we'd love to hear and we'll put whatever it is into the show notes so it's readily available for people, but we'd love to hear that. Yeah, um, I do have my own podcast, which is called Warrior Cymru. And obviously I'm looking to start for young leaders to come on my podcast and, and talk to me, which is like um, super exciting. I have yeah. a book club that um, I'm about to launch shortly. So looking for authors, um, people who like reading is important to me and has always had been, and um, it gives me great joy and that helps with mental health and wellness. Mm. So yeah, I am launching a book club soon. So that is coming. I have a uh, health and wellness events with my JV partners for adults and for teenagers. And um, we are gonna like, um, 
do lives and also for caregivers as well on a mm -hmm. next year we will be doing um i'm hoping um to do a, a live and a combined with hybrid for you know people that want to come on a stage to help yeah. so that they can see that you know that they can reach out to people even if it's not necessarily here in uk and vice versa yeah. wow Thank you so, so much. Lots of things are coming. This is so wonderful. Um, any final thoughts you'd like to share with us about, you know, as you as you have given so many tools of the best thing that we can do to start to take take action. Um, we're all about yeah. being unleashed and unstoppable here. And even when you're in your healing journey, it's important to know that you have limitless power, even if you're not tapped into it. So I'd love to hear your final words around that. I think my final words are these three things. If you're spiritual, obviously prayer is really important. And quite often when I've had some calls, I have like actually gone away for five minutes and prayed and actually hymns are very soothing mm. and that so I think that if the music that you can play can really calm that mindset and I use that regularly and I think as you go through life from childhood and that if you teach your children to listen to music when they're in that state or to find something that they can do is, you know, they might be into painting, they might be into drawing, to do something to um, a great friend, my one of my closest friends has just died and she was bipolar and she would use the stress, you know, coloring and that. So, because that's what she loved. She loved to listen to music. She loved listening to podcasts. She watched, you know, different um, things on the TV. So, that's important prayer I think that ask for help mm. ask mum and dad um absolutely yeah. and if not talk to a friend and if you are worried about somebody even if it's your best friend we will text each other I will text people and say are you okay mm. you know send them a little minute video and that just to say on a voicemail it doesn't have to be long just like how are you doing is everything okay and if you don't hear from them you know and they don't come back yeah then it's time to start to worry because that happens as well when people don't hear and that's yeah. important in the day that in the age that we are yeah. and I think lastly it's about making sure that you've got the time out. We're all busy. You can do it individually or as a family. We're coming up towards Christmas time. It's a family time. There's many families who are not with their families together, sadly, and find it hard. And loneliness can be one of the most hardest things at this time of the year. So I think that's important. Go to your local church. You know, you know whatever you think that you can do to show kindness and gratitude. And that I know yeah. that that mindset, if it's calm, they'll become good leaders. Like I've, I'm still learning every day. We're all learning, and that, and our leadership never stops. Wow! But it's it's time. If you're in a room, I was in a room with crutches, and I'm thinking I can't do this. But I stood up on a stage, and that was just a few days ago. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. if I can do this and I can dress up, then others can do this too. And I can show them that they can, despite all that chaos, everything that I've been through and more. And I could go on all day. Wow. But that's is... why I am a warrior, because you battle the ways and I will lead people from darkness to light when they come to my workshops. Wow. Mm. Wow, Beautiful. that's so powerful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for today. This this won't air today. Today happens to be, um, you know, International or National Mental Health Day. Um, I'm sure it's International Mental Health it's Day. It's world, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I might have said it's World Mental well. Health Day. Yeah, oh, yeah, Mental Health Day. Yeah, to do after and and stuff, mm -hmm. but. So we just are so excited that you're here with us each week. We're so happy to have you. We appreciate you. We love bringing you high value and people who are doing this amazing work in the world like Bethan. And we are super excited to see you next week. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.